post on the benefits of fasting anywhere from two days up to about five days. And those benefits are quite numerous. They include, of course, weight loss because you drop insulin. And when you're not eating, your body has to burn fat off the body. But also there's something called autophagy. So even people who don't need to lose weight, they do some fasting for the purpose, for the benefit of autophagy. And this is where your body changes a lot of its biochemistry. Resources become scarce and your body gets better at recycling and using resources that are already in the body. So it will tend to reduce inflammation. It will tend to give you an immune boost. And it will also help you with brain repair. So if you have some brain inflammation, some brain fog, or if you've had a concussion recently or sometime in the past, then autophagy and fasting is the most powerful way to help the brain to clean some of that stuff up. Another reason why a lot of people do longer fasting is for longevity. So when you go a little bit longer without food, now you start to upregulate your survival genes. They're called sirtuins. And with anywhere from two to five days, you're going to dramatically increase those sirtuins and contribute to better longevity and higher quality of life. And the greatest benefit that would affect the most people is that it's the fastest way of reversing insulin resistance and type to diabetes. And if you can do that, now you're going to start affecting things like high blood pressure. It's going to start coming down. Your risk of stroke, your risk of cancer, your risk of cardiovascular disease are going to come dramatically down. And also not to mention that type 2 diabetes is the number one risk of kidney failure and blindness. So you're going to dramatically reduce all of those. But with all those benefits, why isn't everybody doing longer fasting on a regular basis? Because there are some obstacles. And the first one is ignorance. We're told that we have to eat all the time. You must eat breakfast. You must eat three square meals. You must have frequent snacks and top off your blood sugar every couple of hours. So we've been indoctrinated. And if we're used to that, if we've never missed a meal or never missed a day of meals, then it's kind of scary with the idea of not eating for a couple of days. So we need to understand that it's perfectly safe, that your body is built to go without food. It's called feast and famine. It's a natural balance that actually benefits the body. Another reason would be fear. People don't like discomfort. They're afraid of hunger. They, they're afraid of the unknown. So they think that they're going to get super hungry. They don't know that you get a little bit hungry and then it passes. So it's not really a big deal, but it is a fear that people have to come over and find out that it's not so bad. And then there's this thing called keto flu, which happens when you either go really low carb like keto or you start fasting. Now you can get certain unpleasant symptoms like fatigue and weakness, maybe brain fog, maybe irritability, and then some physical symptoms like headaches, nausea, and poor sleep. So even though there's growing evidence of the benefits of fasting, these are the things that keep people from trying. But here's what we need to understand, that you can make it so much easier if you understand what we're going to talk about. And the key to successful, comfortable long-term fasting is electrolytes. Another word for electrolytes is minerals. And it's minerals that we use in large quantities. We need to consume them hundreds of milligrams or even several grams per day. Whereas trace minerals we use in tiny, tiny amounts like single milligrams or even micrograms. And think of minerals as charged particles. And because of this, they conduct electricity. This is primarily what the body uses them for. And they participate in all the nerve signaling in the body. They're also involved with regulating fluid balance through the kidneys and also pH balance also through the kidneys primarily. And this is basically why you feel bad when you're fasting is if you're losing some of these electrolytes so that you can't regulate your nerve signals and your fluid balance and your pH properly. And here's why these factors can change when you start fasting and keto. So when you eat less, and especially when you eat less carbohydrates, now you start using up a little bit of the stored carbohydrate that you have. And that's called glycogen. Glycogen also binds with water. It's like a sponge. So one gram of glycogen is going to hold on to about three to four grams of water. And then when you burn up the glycogen, there's nothing to hold the water. So it becomes extra and you start losing that water. You go to the bathroom and get rid of it. So the first three to four pounds of any diet is going to be water loss from using up glycogen. And here's why some of these factors can start changing. There's two big reasons. And here's the first one. When you start fasting and keto, you're going to start using up some glycogen. And glycogen is stored carbohydrate. You can store it in your muscles. You can store it in your liver. And what most people don't realize is that glycogen binds water. It's like a sponge. It just holds water to it. So as you start using up the glycogen, you also start losing the water because there's nothing to hold it. The sponge is gone. So the water just kind of leaks out. And you can hold about one pound of glycogen in your body. So that glycogen is going to hold on to about three to four pounds. So as you burn up your glycogen, the first three to four pounds of weight loss of any diet is going to be just plain water because the glycogen is gone.